a show on Netflix called uh, Tiger King. Yeah. He was, do you think he didn't do it? Are you on his side? Uh, well, are you <laughs> what the hell? Was this is real life? I'll take a look. Is that Joe Exotic? Oh! That's Joe Exotic. Donald Trump pardoning Joe Exotic. Let's do it! What is up, everyone? It has been a crazy Tiger King journey so far. Here's the impression I came away with after finishing Tiger King. Joe Exotic is not without fault. He did a lot of things wrong. He kind of used people. The animals kind of took a backseat to his own ambitions later on in the show. It seems pretty convincing. He was set up at least in some degree and that the government kind of made an example of him. I think that's what the directors and writers want the viewer to take away. I'm always a little bit wary of what narrative someone's trying to create with editing. While I do love Joe and I'm a little bit scared to go further into this because I don't want my sacred, my sacred Joe. <laughs> Basically, I don't want my beautiful notions of Joe to be abused because I feel like many people probably do connected to him on some level. That being said, I think once you finish the show, you just have to fill in the gaps. So today we're going to be looking at some of the extra materials to try to kind of get to the bottom of it and see if we can answer some of the questions. Let's just see what we can find, I guess. I don't really know where this is going to go. All these articles about the truth about Tiger King are just captive tigers, captive tigers. No one cares about the damn animal. I want to know about Joe. <laughs> Oh, what Tiger King didn't tell you about the true story. Joe Exotic had a lot more husbands. How many can you... I don't, I don't want to... Never mind. He had a husband who died in his arms. Joe really has lived a life. He's really been through a lot of stuff. 20 things you missed in Tiger King on Netflix. This I've been looking forward to watching this. All right, what do we miss, Screen Rant? so much good stuff on Netflix these days. Tiger King. Hell Murder, yeah. Mayhem and Madness. Get and to it. Other... Get to it. Might have missed about yes, I know. the soul and watching it. Shut Don't up. do that right now to pull in. Ugh, Spoiler this is alert, clickbait. big cats are actually more common in the United States than you would think. According to the World they, Wildlife they Fund, like there are roughly... Get out of here with this crap. They said that 500 times in the show. I hate they YouTube. No longer... Zero. Zero things I missed on Tiger King. Fuck you, Screen Rant. What else we got? Oh, Rick Kirkham talks. I trust that guy. David Sway. You know, David, I lived in the zoo for a year, and I can't tell you what what a trip it is to look back on that year. And uh, you hear the sound of roaring of lions at night when you go to sleep, which That's terrified awesome. my little dog. When I first met Joe Exotic, I knew this is a million dollar show. This for guy, sure. I'm going to retire on this guy. I hope Rick Kirkham made money out of this. Really. I really hope that he... Thing. There was a payoff for him because he seems like a good guy. I, I want to joke about it. it. Sounds crippling. Was losing all that footage in the fight. There was the suspicion over the fire. Two days before the fire, Joe and I got into a very bad argument on the fact that I owned the rights to the reality show. Uh, he was not happy, and he made a quick turn and ran out of town for a few days, supposedly for a funeral. But he locked the door on the studio, and he, uh, he changed the lock, so I couldn't get in without having the park manager come in and let me in the next mm. morning. Uh, two days after that, the studio burned to the ground. Mm. Uh, there was footage in there of Joe actually killing animals for fun. Uh, he had been for my year. He could walk up to a tiger Whoa. and like it, just shot it in the head. It broke my heart. This lady drove in one day and she had a horse trainer with this old horse that was sick and, and it was it was just getting old. Damn, that and sucks. she cried and said, Joe, could you take care of my horse? I can no longer care for him. He hugged her and oh yeah, hon, it'll be fine. You leave the trainer, we'll bring the trainer back tomorrow. We'll, we'll put him out in the pasture and get him a good place. As soon as the lady left the park, Joe said, Rick, grab your camera, start rolling. And I roll on him, he walks up to the horse trainer, pulls oh, his out, shoots the horse in the head dead, and laughs. Yeah. Just, that was Joe Exotic. Well, you know, oh, no. he fed that horse my to heart the lions. is broken. There's probably a lot darker stuff, and it's sort of, when I'm talking to people like you, you know, there is a way to... Damn it. Damn it, Joe. Don't trust anybody. I got six months of therapy after I left that zoo. I went to see a shrink. I went inpatient for a week at one place in Dallas, Texas, wow. just to get my head back on straight. Holy uh, crap. Really, I knew that I sold out my, my own soul, so to speak, that I, I really kind of chewed up my journalistic integrity and thrown it out a window. So in a way, karma kind of came back for both Joe and I. He's famous, but he's sitting in prison. That's so poetically beautiful, my God. For both of them. You can't even write things this well, the way that turned out. Literally, Rick Kirkham's sins were burned in a fire. I'm going to be chewing on that one for a while. And Joe got famous, but he ended up in a cage like the animals that he mistreated. Unreal. Life is unreal. Literary genius in action. You know, you kind of had a little bit of a heart for the guy, but you really didn't realize or get to see how evil he really could be. Not only the animals, but the people. Well, hmm. sure. I mean, uh, were you around when the, uh, when, it, when the tiger bit his shoes and dragged no. him? No, no that, that had actually happened before I'd gotten there. That was footage of his that he had had. Um, yeah, see, I knew they were messing with time. People out there, David, think you should play him in the TV series now. Yeah, I, yeah, I like. I don't know how I feel about that. If someone told me I should play Joe Exotic, what am I saying? I'd be super flattered. There was a real, uh, uh, kind of a hard to explain uh, magnetic, magnetic feel when you have a big cat in your hand. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, sure. When you're able to hold a tiger. You know, uh, you get there's yeah, a big that, evil I, that, thing to a power yeah, trip. The show showed that pretty clearly. You know, I, 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 I've got to meet God one day and he'll say, Rick, I'd let you in if it weren't for Tiger King. You know? <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully God is uh, I like Rick a lot. Did you ever try that Walmart pizza with the expired meat? You know what? Quite honestly, I did eat a steak one time. It wasn't that bad, but it only been... 
This Walmart truck gets a bad rap. It's not that bad. It's not just expired meat like they're saying. What they said in the documentary, and what I'm sure is true, is that if anyone picks it up and carries it to the cash register and then doesn't want it, they can't put it back. Most of it's probably pretty good meat. I'd eat it. I mean, if there's a steak on the Walmart truck, I'm, not, I'm cooking that up in a second. Forget it. I mean, it's kind of funny, but those people are starving. I mean, they need food. They're not getting paid. It's not, it's not, I'm not starving. I would eat the steak off the Walmart truck, David Spade. Wait at the zoo, man. You, you would have lightened it up a little bit, David. We should have had you there. You, you could have been Joe Exotic's alter ego, the nice one. Whew. Well, that was a lot. That video was a lot to take in, but at least we're getting somewhere now. My my opinion of Joe took a little hit. They do hint at the fact that Joe mistreated animals. It seems like he was trying to reconcile with that fact at the end of the documentary. That is disheartening. The animal charges against him seem a little bit more credible now. This is the most wonderful feeling. <laughs> to something uh, wild. Do you want to be my wife? Spend the day no. and night pairing up in cabins. Carol did all this? You don't get much sleep. <laughs> This is what you'll go through all is night long. Is that young Carol Baskin? They sleep all day, and by the time you get there, the cat Whoa, is awake. Whoa, she looks different. She looks kind of good. <sighs> Carol Lewis is the in... It's not my fault. It's it's the big cats. The big... <laughs> 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 Gotta give her the benefit of the doubt here and say this was Don's part. This is before she killed Don. Maybe she killed Don to save the animals. I'm going through changes today. This is unpleasant. Unpredictable. Tasha. Oh, he's biting her head. Oh my god. That's enough of that. Not really what I was looking for. Oh wow, this interview with Saf. Uh, one th thing I thought was odd, maybe I'm wrong, was Joe running around with a paramedics coat on during that? Did you see yes, that thank on? you. I'm oh, so happy the, they're uh, answering the this. One. Joe told me, he us that he used to be a paramedic, and that was just his old his old jacket. But what an odd time to throw it on. It is. Yeah, mm -hmm. but I, I'm pretty sure I made it clear um, in the documentary as well. But he is all about showmanship, man. Like, yeah, I mean, it that's like what it was. I think I commented on that like, when that happened. How did he get into that medical jacket part. so quickly? Did he put that on for the cameras? It was definitely for a reason. You're right. There's got to be yeah. a charm or an appeal because everyone seems to stick. You know, they right. all, like right. you, they stay with him. Uh, so I'm not putting words in your mouth, but he's a good-hearted guy. There's something about him, right, that people like. You know, uh, no, Joe, Joe has a heart, for sure, 100%. I, I've seen it with the animals and whatnot, um, which is why I got on board in the first place. Oh, we got we some conflicting information here. Some of our animals in general. Um, but you learn very quickly that he is very fast to tell you what he knows you want. Yeah. So mm. he's a man of many masks. He can be mm. anything. Mm. You know, they did a good job with it as a viewer because every mm -hmm. episode just... So much more. You so peel the onion. More. Like, you go, whoa. And then you're like, you're yeah. only in the third one? Wait to the fourth one. So <laughs> yeah, I so kept, true. Uh, oh the person is like, Carol Bass, Carol Bass, Carol Bass. It's so nice to know David Spade was having the same experience as me watching this show. The, the beef and the truck, It's all, and it's on pizza. <laughs> Again, we're talking about the meat. Uh, David Spade's doing some good work, list, man. He's just interviewing <laughs> these people. It's great. And he yes. said it was because he had, like, a mongoose without a permit, but everyone's like, it was a little more than the mongoose. So, <laughs> so and then they had him on some stuff. But that's when everything started to fall apart, right? See, this is the power of the show and why yeah, they did such a great job. Everyone had a similar experience. The narrative really pulled you in a cohesive way to get you to certain conclusions. What I'm kind of getting from all these interviews and what makes me really happy is that the narrative actually is pretty close to how the actual people feel about it. So far, the things I've seen have validated those feelings about the people. That gives me even more appreciation for the show than I already had. Yeah, I think um, for me, I was introduced to it as she killed him and get him out. <laughs> That's how I was introduced to Carol. You know, that's what we all were, I guess. Pretty believable. That's an animal rights activist. That's exactly it. And you know, I've met all these people in person and they come off on camera exactly exactly the same way. I mean, that's just them. Wow. So you're not seeing like a, a show. This is them. <laughs> this wow. Is them. That's, that's it really like very real. And that's why. Good to hear. I'm, I'm happy to hear that. That, that kind of um, calms down my suspicions um, a little bit. So that seems super cool. I like her. If there's a movie, who would play Joe Exotic? Who do you see? Do you see Matthew McConaughey? Say David no. Spade. No, Say David Spade. Come on, David. Yes! David Spade. Oh, yeah, he was Joe Dirt. He's halfway there. <gasps> Jeff Lowe. Oh my god. Hey. And he's got his wife. Hey, dude. I'm nervous. I'm, I'm sweating. What happened to David Spade's not making any jokes right now. I don't know if you're looks nervous. when Joe got bit on the feet. The problem with Joe did is that he would actually give shoes to them as toys. So when they see shoes, they're like, oh, that's a toy. Carol in basket. There's no doubt. There's this is no awkward question. as hell. I mean, if you can... We know so much more than that documentary showed. You know, Netflix whitewashed a lot of it, I think, because of they whitewashed exposure it. of something they can't prove. We have a lot more evidence against her that just wasn't shown. Shit, whitewashed? Nerd, Does it remind you of The Wizard of Oz, watching her ride that bike around? I mean, he loves this Whatever Wicked Witch of the West metaphor. Him. We know Sanctuary is supposed to be close to the public, and she's open to the public. She charges $36 for somebody to go in and see big cats in small cages. So I don't know how she can justify it or, or differentiate it from what we do. You know, and we're trying to make right. our cages bigger and bigger. She's trying to just fill her little park, you know, fill her cat. So right. I just don't, I just don't get it. She's hypocritical. And Jeff um, Rowe, so talking she, sense. Can't deny she it. Does come up. It's David Spade, anything. ask him she's about the she's saying that she's setup. Saying. Any regrets from the show? Anything you didn't, you wish they showed her? Eric's a director. Ask about the setup, you coward. You know how I would better than anybody. They create a lot of 
things that really don't exist, and it's sensationalized things. But that's that's a discussion for you know other time. You know, let him enjoy his no. You know, he made us look like sluts, but it's really helping us get laid. So you know, we're <laughs> okay that way. And, oh no, I don't want to so like Jeff Lowe. Do I don't want to like him. <laughs> Conflict. Jeff Lowe has a lot of charisma. I mean, if if he is a con man, you know, I see how he does it. But on a happier note, I like can I introduce my baby? Of course. The baby and the nanny. Oh, the nanny's the one you were looking online. Yeah, the nanny. Oh, the nanny's here! here. Hi, it's the nanny! Oh, yes! Find a camera. Hi, how are you? That nanny's <laughs> really trying to get in the shot. <laughs> hey, guys. Uh, I'm the nanny. I think I got what I was looking for. Thank you, David Spade, I guess. So, yeah, it looks like Joe is kind of a con man in his own right. The concern for animals, you know, I think that was fairly depicted, maybe. It seems like in the beginning, he really did care about them, and in the end, he just lost it, lost his mind. Is he guilty? Still uncertain. I mean, it's hard to say. Overall, what I'm hearing is that the show did a fairly accurate job depicting a lot of the things and maybe even understating some things according to a couple of them that said that said that they were not showing things that they whitewashed it that blows my mind that it was whitewashed so yeah you got to be careful of these things you know you got to be careful what you believe from watching tv and watching an edited product hope you guys enjoyed i'll see you back for the bonus episode of tiger king on the 12th or 13th see you then